Charles has been a postmaster for a long time. <laughs> Charles is a financial advisor right here in Winter Park, where he's lived since 1990. The title of Charles' speech today is The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> oh, Charles. Oh, oh, oh. Good morning, Toastmasters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And guests. The Empire Strikes Back. So, two goals that were set in place from the outcome of World War II was a stable currency to stabilize trade. Trade meaning shipping. And who was going to police that shipping was the US Navy. At that time, we made the dollar the world trade currency, which it still is today. The reason you and I can buy cheap stuff is because our Navy, strongest in the world, is now and has been for 75 years the cops on the high ocean. So why are we able to buy cheap goods? Well, globalization. This was all to keep war wars from starting all over again. We didn't want another World War I. We didn't want another World War II. Both of those wars were devastating. I can't get into the reason they started, but today, what we are experiencing after being growing up in a world where we have access and peace, basically, that is all changing now. What we have today is deglobalization. What's changed? Well, a lot has changed. So China, which is an empire, it's a collection of nation states. Russia, which is an empire, which is now an ex-member of collection of nation states. Still pretty much so. The British Empire, long gone. Prior to World War II, the British pound was the world trade currency. Why does that matter? Well, there was a big fight during the war and America came out on top because America had two-thirds of the world's gold stock and we made the rules because we had the gold. John Maynard Keynes was not happy with us, but we won. The Fed is now king. Why does this matter? Well, this right here, which we take for granted, is one of the things that is, well, reasonably affordable. There's 1,400 components that go into that phone, 70 different countries which touch it. The copper, the plastic, the everything that goes into this thing. If one of those channels has a problem, you don't get a new iPhone. Think about it. China imports 90% of its stuff. Oil, steel, coal. And with that, they make cheap stuff and send it to the rest of the world. What does that depend on? Shipping. No shipping lanes need to be quite calm. No pirates, no mercantilists. Who does that? We do. <clears throat> But we're not doing that as much anymore. So what happens when the first thing breaks out like a war in Russia and Ukraine? The sh first shot's fired. What happens to all of Russia's oil that they ship around the world? Well, the companies that insure those ships say, we're not going to insure those ships anymore. So guess what? If you don't have insurance on your ship, you don't leave the port. Well, that, how does that work? Well. All the other stuff from around the world. The cost of that insurance goes through the roof. Why do I care about this? Why do you? Why are we supposed to care about this? What's all the buzz right now? Inflation. Well, because we've been buying cheap stuff from China and other parts of Asia for so long, we've taken it for granted. We want what we want when we want it. We go to Walmart, we buy cheap junk, which is a conduit for Asia or Target or online, or whatever. So that's all changing now. 
Inflation's high. We all know it's around 5 or 6 percent. The cost of everything is going up. Is it here to stay? You betcha. Yes, it's here to stay. The reason being is because of all this globalization, which is now being reversed, is we're bringing stuff back to our shores, manufacturing. We're reshoring, going to Vietnam. We're going to Thailand. We're going to anywhere else in the world that we can set up and get reliable supply chains. There's other factors involved with this, involved with this that have, are causing Russia to do what they're doing and to hit China, or causing China to do what they're doing. Do I dare get into those reasons? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's in cahoots here, but what we've had in both of these countries is a declining demographic, meaning less young people, too many old people. So you've got this pig in the python, this moving through the python, all right, which is population bulge. Every country had a baby boom after World War II. Well, China said, we're only having one child per family for 40 years. What do you think that does when you need 40-year-olds today? And there's no 40-year-olds. Uh -huh. Well, it's not good. It's really not good. By 2050, China's population will be half of what it is today. Oh. Russia, because of it's Russia, and there's been a very horrible economy for so long. People don't have kid, people just don't have families as much. So what, what do you have when you have a good economy? You have children. How do we fare in all this? Well, America, we have very high-end manufacturing, and we have very good low-end manufacturing. It's the middle where we're missing. Well, Canada and Mexico provide a lot of that. We've got boats on both sides called the Atlantic and the Pacific. Well, we're good. We also have a strong Navy. So we also have a demographic, a very solid demographic, meaning we've got, we had a lot of babies. Baby boomers' kids had babies. Gen Z, yeah. scratch, scratch, not so sure. But we're okay for now. Why does this matter? It matters a lot because this tells us when and where, it's all about the math, where the growth is going to be, and what continent it's going to be, and how stable wars, no wars, and that kind of stuff. Why does that affect us? It affects us. So, when you want to hear more, I'll give another speech sometime soon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>